All right, so this is how you measure superheat subcooling. You did it on the refrigeration trainer. You're also gonna have to do it on this unit here once you get your condenser unit hooked up. You'll need the set of gauges hooked up and you'll need to know what the pressures are. All right, so the pressures on this one are running at about 140 PSI on the low side and about 290 on the high side. You'll need to also either have the PT chart or for this one, we're gonna use the center in pink because that's matching with the refrigerant 410A rose, really, in the center, okay? So I don't need the PT chart, I have it right here. And what you also are gonna need, besides the set of gauges, is a temperature probe to connect up onto the lines. For superheat, I can get two different superheats. The first one's total system superheat. So I gotta pull this back a little bit, and let's get it in a flat spot right here. It'd be better if I could get it further back on the bow, but because all this is glued up, I'm not going to tear it up. All right, so we're going to get a reading on this one, and this one's going back to T1. So we're reading about 45 degrees. So the actual temperature of our refrigerant is also at about 45 degrees. So this is a case where we don't have any superheat. We have no superheat coming back to the line because the line temperature is the same temperature as our saturation temperature. That's bad. That means that we have liquid possibly coming back through that's not getting boiled off in the evaporator and could get into the compressor valves, which will cause for slugging, all right, or liquid flood back where it mixes with the oil and it causes a lot of foaming with the oil and reduces the viscosity and the ability of the oil to lubricate properly and could cause problems with metal grinding against metal. So we got to take some of this refrigerant out to get the superheat to go up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the high side and we're going to connect up. This has got a low loss fitting on it. I cannot do it with a low loss fitting. I need another yellow hose. Another yellow hose. All right. So while we're doing that, let's go ahead and measure subcooling. Subcooling, I'm going to take it and place it on the line, the liquid line. And I'm going to get a different number, and because we're on the liquid line, we're going to look at the high side pressure. Our high side temperature is at 90 degrees. That's our saturation temperature on the liquid line, 90 degrees. So any number below 90 is going to be the extra cooling that we're getting from that after it's all been boiled, after it's all been changed to condensed to a liquid. So it's probably getting condensed to a liquid about right here, and it still has two or three more loops to go down while it's a liquid at 90 degrees, so it's getting cooled down, it looks like by about another 18 degrees. So 90 minus 72 is 18 degrees of subcooling. That's pretty good. That's pretty good subcooling. But uh, that will go up too when I remove some of the refrigerant. So we're going to go back where's the yellow hose. Let's connect up the yellow hose here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do system dependent recovery. Don't need the recovery machine. All I need is the unit running. And then we're going to take the liquid from the high side and put it in the vapor of the low side or the low, low uh, part of the tank, the blue gauge. So before I open that up, I'm going to open up this and let some of that come through here, purge it so I see liquid. And then I can now recover the refrigerant using the machine and throttling it back here. And when I do that, you can watch the superheat. So already we've gone up a little bit. It was at 45 before, now she's at 52. Just from taking out a little bit of refrigerant. Take out a little bit more, and it should go up a little bit more. It'll drop first, it's probably just getting... Might go up to 53. Take a little bit more out. There's 53. So you see what I'm doing? I'm reducing the amount of refrigerant, and now we got superheat. Should have at least five degrees of superheat to make sure that there's no liquid coming back in in that compressor. So you were just a little bit overcharged on that. That's not a big deal. That's just a little overcharged on your system. All right. And we could have made sure if we would have taken all the refrigerant out and weighed the exact amount of refrigerant back in. So that's pretty much it for that. That's how you measure superheat and subcooling on an air conditioning unit. You're gonna have to do that as well. Cut.